channel. It's your girl Sean. I'm back with another video. Gonna be talking to you guys a little bit about the Black Panther movie that recently came out. Hubby and I went to go see it over the weekend and we had such a good time. It was so such a fun experience to be out there. You had all these people in their African garb, wearing their dashikis and uh, wearing their Black Panther-esque outfits with the leather and all black and having the little hat on. It was just so good to be able to see us show up for us like this in a positive way. It's also good to have a film that didn't depict black people as slaves, as criminals, as gangsters. It's good to be able to celebrate black excellence. The world needs more of this and we need more of this. Hollywood needs more of this. It's also really frustrating sometimes to see some of the, uh, some of the hate. How come black people loving ourselves or celebrating ourselves, that shouldn't say anything about anyone else. Like, how does me loving me have anything to do with you? Or me celebrating people that look like me say anything about you? There's like 99.9% .9 films out there that are all white. Nobody says a thing. As soon as there's a black film with black actors and a black director, black producer, all that kind of stuff, then it's like, it's too black. Do you say anything else is too white? We had to tell you that Oscars were so white. But anyway... Yes, it's going to be that kind of video. <laughs> I'm going to do my best not to spoil the film for you because I wouldn't want anybody to spoil it for me, but I do want to sort of touch on a few key points and things that I really took away from it as best I can, all right? So leading up to the film, my husband, uh, he was trying to set the tone all week. He was playing the Black Panther soundtrack, which is very Kendrick Lamar heavy. I think it was produced by Kendrick, so really good soundtrack. If you love Kendrick Lamar and you love that sort of conscious rap, uh, you're definitely going to enjoy it. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It had a really heavy African influence. I think they even used some uh, African artists in the soundtrack. So I really liked that. But I was a little bit curious about how they were going to balance sort of the old school, authentic, you know, African traditions and heritage and really sort of, you know, paying serious homage to our ancestors while still being very new school, relevant and current. Now, if you watch the film, you know, they did it beautifully. They, they beautifully leapfrog between old school and traditions and new school and traditions. I really love that because whether you're 17 or 70, you could resonate with the film. It wasn't too young. It wasn't too old. It wasn't too serious. It wasn't too, too light. It was perfect. It kind of was in a couple different genres. I'm somebody who loves action movies. I get it from my daddy. I love action movies. There was plenty of action. There was also some romance. There was also some drama. There were also plenty of comedic moments in it. I like the fact that it was a really good hybrid of a bunch of different genres. So if you're like, you know what, I don't really like, you know, romance. I'm not really into action. There was enough of so many different elements of it. No matter what your particular flavor was, you found it in this film. And I know it sounds really sort of, <laughs> you know, like I'm I'm saying it's all things to all people, but I mean, like, what do you want me to say? I'm just being real. So um, I also really like the fact that the characters were very well developed. I feel like anyone in that film could have a spinoff. Whether it's T'Challa, who is the lead, whether it's T'Challa's sister, whether it's the girlfriend, whether it's, you know, the head of his security, no matter who it was, Angela Bassett's character, no matter who it was, I feel like everybody could have had a spinoff. That's how much care and time they took into developing each character. Now, I also like the fact that the movie was not rushed. They did not hurry up and give you a plot and it wasn't it wasn't predictable at all. There was no point in the film where I was like, I know exactly what's going to happen. It had enough twists and turns and surprises in it to really keep you captivated. And like I said, it was it was enough sort of romance for those who like romance, enough action. So you whether you're a guy who prefers the more like shoot em up bang bang style movies or you prefer that kind of thing, more masculine. And it had enough feminine energy in it as well. And speaking of feminine energy, Another thing that I really liked, one of my biggest takeaways from the film was the strength of the women. In this movie, 
the Black Panther was not the only hero. There were so many heroes and heroic moments in this film. There are so many women in the movie and their role wasn't just to be the damsel in distress. I cannot stand when the only role they let a woman play is to be uh, the person that gets kidnapped so that the bad guy can get back at the hero and he's got to save the girl. These princesses did not need saving. And I love that, that it showed women in a, in a a position of power and strength and that oftentimes we were the ones to help to save the day. It wasn't just a man coming in to save somebody. Um, another thing that I really love was a lot of the one-liners in there. They're deep, especially the line at the very end. I'm not going to say it because I feel like if somebody puts it out there ahead of time, it will take a bit of the sting away from it. The last line of the villain will shake you to your core. The movie also had a very nice balance between sort of the Martin Luther King philosophy and the Malcolm X philosophy. It depends on where you are, how you were raised, your background, all of that, which one you resonate with more. Are you more of the peaceable, let's all get together, let's all make peace? Is that your mentality? Or are you more sort of uh, militant, more, Mar more Malcolm, I should say, where you're more of any means necessary? It depends on who you are, what kind of balance you have with that, but it really shows the complexity of black people and how we feel, how, how white America views us, how white America views Mother Africa. How, I mean, it's, oh my gosh, it's so good. My only suggestion is that you see it yourself. Like I said, I don't want to spoil it for you. Even if somebody tells you what's going to happen, you have to see it played out. It is brilliantly acted out. You have Oscar winners like Forrest Whitaker and, um, Lupita Nyong'o, you have Oscar nominated people like Angela Bassett. It's well acted. The music, the everything. I just absolutely love it. The movie was everything. And do yourself a favor and check it out. Hubby and I, like I said, we saw it this past weekend. We're going to see it again this weekend because we loved it just that much. But let me tell you also really quickly, because nobody said this to us. Do not move until the lights come on. As with most Marvel superhero movies, oftentimes they leave some little, you know, little clues, little nuggets, little hidden clips inside like the credits and stuff like that. So do not move as soon as you see a name roll up. No, you stay until the very end. All right, I love you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this sort of really quick couch side review. And let me know what you thought of the film without ruining it in the uh, comment section. I love you guys. and I'll see you in the next video. Till next time. Later divas and dudes. Jesus, honey.